Welcome everybody, uh, including folks who are joining in now. My name is Majid Shafiq. I'm a, an interventional pulmonologist here at the Brigham. And we're talking about a very novel and exciting new way to treat people with severe emphysema. I have no disclosures. So we know that um, COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is a huge public health burden. Third leading cause of death uh, among adults in the US. It's a huge global health burden as well. And out of folks with COPD, a huge chunk have emphysema where alveolar destruction is the norm. So the spongy part of the lung gets destroyed over time and leads to all kinds of problems. One of which is hyperinflation where the lung um, no longer stays as nicely compressed like a balloon as it's supposed to, but rather gets hyperinflated. In other words, the chest cavity becomes more and more cramped, which leads to problems with difficulty breathing, problems with exertional capacity and such. So one way to treat people with hyperinflation is to get rid of a portion of the lung. And there's two ways to do it. The classical way is to do a surgery. Lung volume reduction surgery will simply cut out the top portions of both lungs. If you look at the diagram on the rightmost side, you'll see a red circle I drew um, showing the, the top of a lung that might be clipped away by lung volume reduction surgery. It's a nice way to make the patients feel better over the course of time. And there is some mortality benefit with that in a select subgroup of patients too, uh, but complications abound. Uh, many folks don't make it in the immediate aftermath. It's a major surgery. Many patients and many doctors are very hesitant to pursue lung volume reduction surgery. A much less invasive um, alternative that we now have is through bronchoscopy with placement of endobronchial valves. Where would you place the endobronchial valves? You would place them in the airways leading up to the target portion of the lung. That way you cut off the airway supply and you make that portion of the lung collapse. So if you look at the green circle over here, it's pointing to an airway leading to more or less the same target site where the surgery would have taken it out. The trouble though with bronchoscopy and placement of endobronchial valves is something called collateral ventilation, which is present in some patients, but not every patient, thankfully. If you have collateral ventilation, such as what is shown in the diagram to the left, you have an open communication, a backdoor communication between the target lobe and the lobe adjacent to it. So that even if you placed valves in the major airways leading up to a portion of the lung, it would never get collapsed. It would never get decompressed because through those backdoor channels, they would continue to get air supply and the valves would be completely unsuccessful. So what you want to do is you want to select the right patient with hyperinflation and no collateral ventilation, such as what is shown in the diagram to the right, where there is a complete fissure separating the upper portion of the lung and the lower portion of the lung so that if you now occluded the main airways through one-way valves, you could hope to achieve airway de uh, lung decompression. So here is an example of a software that uh, looks at a normal CAT scan of the chest and spits out a report suggesting whether or not the patient is a go for bronchoscopic lung volume reduction. So let's examine this diagram. If you look at it, you, you see two lungs over here. The one on the left is actually the right lung and the one on the right is actually the left lung. And you see different shades of gray at different portions of the lung that suggest just how badly diseased any portion of the lung really is. That's important to us. We want to obviously target a portion of the lung that is, you know, fairly diseased so that if you're going to sacrifice a portion of the lung, we sacrifice not the most healthy portion of the lung, but one of the more diseased portions of the lung. So in this case, I would either go for, uh, you know, the, the most black portion of the lung or this gray portion of the lung on the right side. The other thing to look at very importantly is whether or not there is any suggestion of collateral ventilation. Remember, we don't want collateral ventilation. 
So here that is demonstrated by the, the lines. The lines are either solid as in the case of the, this left figure, which suggests that there is a good complete lobar fissure and hopefully an absence of collateral ventilation. Or you can see the dotted lines as you see on the diagram to the left, which suggests that the lobar fissures separating different portions of the lung may not be complete. And unfortunately, there may be enough collateral ventilation to make valve placement uh, be unlikely to be successful. So armed with this information, we're gonna go ahead and decide to place a valve in an area of the lung that appears to be more likely to uh, to achieve success. How do we go about doing that? Well, first of all, CAT scans can get it wrong too. So as you see in this video, we're going to test out whether there really is no backdoor channels and no evidence of collateral ventilation. How do we do that? We do that by inflating a balloon and occluding airway air entry into a portion of the lung that we want to ultimately target. So here we've inflated a balloon and at the very distal tip of this catheter, more distal to the balloon, we have an airflow sensor that is now sensing as we see whether or not airflow gets to be lower and lower and lower over time. That is what you would expect supposing there was no collateral ventilation and you had successfully occluded all air flow going into that portion of the lung. You're looking at two graphs over here. The one on the top uh, runs over 30 seconds and the one on, on the bottom is basically the same, but it gives you a picture over the past two minutes. So it moves a little bit slower compared to the, the graph on the top. And what you see here is that progressively, airflow is becoming lower and lower and lower. That's reassuring. That's uh, good to hear. That's encouraging because it suggests that the CAT scan had gotten it right. And indeed, we probably don't have any major significant amount of collateral ventilation. At the very end, you can see that the airflow came back up as we deflated the balloon. Once again, sort of a, you know, a positive control proof of concept before we go ahead and deploy the valves. So here's sort of the overall snapshot. You can see that the airflow had gone down. And then eventually when we deflated the balloon like that, the airflow went back up. So now what we've established is that this portion of the lung is indeed a suitable target for bronchoscopic lung volume reduction through placement of a one-way valve. Before we place the one-way valve, we have an airway sizer that we're gonna use to figure out what is the appropriate size of the, uh, of the valve that we should be targeting. Here, the sizer has two wings. There's a longer set of wings that should be touching the airway wall and a shorter set of wings that should not be touching the airway wall if this particular airway sizer, which is uh, sizing for a four millimeter valve is indeed uh, the right size. You also see sort of two lines over there on the catheter that suggest what profile of the valve to, uh, to choose. So once we figure that out, we're going to go ahead and deploy the valve. As you can see here, I'm going to bring the bronchoscope back a little bit so you can see the valve a little bit better. And you can see the valve is now nicely positioned. It's called a fish mouth valve. You can see it's got a fish mouth here at the end. There's no chance for any air to leak from around the valve. The only way air could come out of this portion of the lung now is through opening this fish mouth, which can only be opened from one side. So air can no longer enter this portion of the lung, but air can come out of this portion of the lung just the way we want it. Over time, what would we expect to see? We would expect to see what we see right here in my last slide, a successful lung volume reduction. So if you look at the x-ray to the right, which is the post-procedure x-ray, you can see that the left upper lobe, which is what we were targeting based on our software assessment from the CAT scan, has been collapsed. Now, you can see this, uh, this haziness, this white, white colored haziness 
called the Luftschiffel sign. And uh, this suggests that the left upper lobe has indeed been collapsed in total. You also see that the corresponding hemidiaphragm, uh, as indicated by this arrow, has now come up, so much so that it is higher than the right-sided hemidiaphragm. Whereas if you compare that to the pre-procedure film, you saw that the left hemidiaphragm was actually lower compared to the right hemidiaphragm. In other words, we've achieved what we needed to achieve through a very simple, straightforward placement of one way valves without having to put a patient through a major surgery uh, that could lead to significant morbidity and even mortality.